Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash i5. Hey everybody, I'm Sarah Lynn and welcome to the newest episode of i5 for the iPhone. This show is for us, the iPhone fanatics, and I suspect that maybe a few of you might be watching for the first time this week. If so, welcome to the i5 army, I think you'll like it here. Every week we cover i5 topics from the must-have apps to the news you need to know, so let's start the show. Number one. Now, I said that I ordered a white iPhone 5, and I did do that, but because I waited until the next morning instead of midnight on September 14th, I'm actually back ordered another week or so. FML. But that's okay because Tom Merritt let me use his for the purposes of demonstration. So let's talk about what's great on the iPhone 5 and what's not. Now, first, I love having more real estate on the screen, but the size is going to take some getting used to. Long phone is long. I'll check back next week and let you know if it's still weirding me out. Is that happening to any of you guys? Now, even though the iPhone 5 doesn't weigh that much less than a 4S, it really doesn't. Because it's longer and thinner, you really get the sense that it's somehow made of air. I worried last week that it was gonna make it feel cheaper. It doesn't, it doesn't. My biggest issue is not losing it in my purse now that it's got even less bulk. And finally, I was also a little bit worried about apps not being updated for the new four inch screen fast enough and having a bunch of letterboxed apps. Now, obviously we're still in transition, but most of the apps that I'm using on a daily basis are already updated. I would say about half of those are good to go with App Store updates rolling in several times a day, so I don't think there's any need to panic on that one. Now I've heard, and you have too, from more than a few folks, that these anodized cases are really, really fragile and nicks and scratches are appearing way too easily, particularly on the black models, but also on the whites. I know this is going to happen. Hey, phones get scratched up, but it sounds a little beyond normal wear and tear to me. So let's see how my phone looks after being tossed in and out of handbags alongside a set of keys for about a month. In short, I really do love this phone so far. If you have one, do you love yours? Is there anything really, really bugging you that we haven't covered? If so, write us at i5 at twit.tv and get it off your chest. Number two, the last thing I would ever do is abandon all you iPhone users who haven't upgraded to the iPhone 5 yet. So let's switch back to my iPhone 4S to talk a little bit about iOS 6, which we all got last week except if you're an iPhone 3G user, I'm sorry about that. By far the number one talking point, the new Maps app. No more Google data here. This is Apple's first attempt at a Google Maps competitor. Depending on who you talk to, it's either better or it's just as good or it's really, really terrible when it comes to accurately finding what you're looking for. My biggest complaint so far, losing Street View. I love Street View, I love that about Google Maps. I have spent hours virtually walking around neighborhoods worldwide via Street View and now it's gone and I am sad. By the way, I can still use the web version of Google Maps and Safari, maps.google.com, but I don't get Street View, so it's not good enough. So here is my workaround until Google either offers a standalone Google Maps app or Apple gets a clue. Live Street View. There's a free ad-supported version of this app, but I'm using the ad-free 99 cent app. Anything you can look up on Google Street View, you can look up here. In fact, it's just actually using Google's data. So you search for a particular address, or you can tap on the general area in a map to get the street view. Navigating along a street works. Feels a little bit stuttery, but it works. It's also compass aware, so you can swing around and get a decent virtual tour experience. That's kind of nice. I've noticed a few glitches. For example, if I search for the Twit Studio here, it puts me in the alley out back behind the street. But in general, Live Street View does the job of giving me the functionality that Apple so rudely took away. Number three, Passbook. Available for iPhone users and iOS 6. Who's excited? I, there doesn't really seem to be much fanfare about Passbook. In fact, we got an email from David Hale who said, could you please cover on your show why the Passport feature in iOS 6 doesn't seem to do anything? Thank you. 
Well, David, it isn't exactly useless, but it's not very intuitive either. I get your point. For example, Sephora is a passbook partner. I happen to have a Sephora rewards card that I carry around in my wallet to scan for points every time I buy something in a Sephora store, shampoo, hairspray, stuff like that. Now with passbook, once I download the Sephora app, which I didn't have downloaded already, I can link it to my account, which will then show up in Passbook, and then I can use this updated information at the checkout counter instead of my dumb little Sephora card, which I can pretty much throw away at this point. If I shop via the Sephora app, my rewards are already updated automatically, so I don't need Passbook. I also downloaded the Fandango and the United Airlines apps because they both integrate with Passbook, and there are also services that I use. But from what I understand, I still have to book movie tickets on my Fandango app or flights on my United Airlines app, and then I can choose to have my ticket sent to Passbook as proof of purchase. So this is very clearly not some sort of a digital wallet solution. It's just an organizer that isn't very exciting unless you happen to be a big rewards card person. I expect it to get better as more companies jump on board. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Audible. Audible.com is the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles. If you're looking for a particular book, Audible has literature including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For i5 viewers, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their service. One audiobook you really might like is The Handmaid's Tale, written by Margaret Atwood, but narrated by Emmy Award-winning actress, as of a day ago, Claire Danes. She's great. Number four. If you're already a Dropbox user, you know how convenient it is to access all of your stuff via its iPhone app. If you don't have a Dropbox account, it's one of the best cloud services out there. Any file you save to your Dropbox account lives in the cloud, so you can access your photos, your documents, your videos from Dropbox on your computer, your iPhone, your iPad, or Dropbox's website. Very convenient. In fact, I think I mentioned on a previous episode that I use If This Then That, which is ifttt.com, to copy any photo I upload to Instagram to Dropbox so that I have a cloud backup of all my Instagram photos. A lot of iPhone apps sync with Dropbox too, so if I'm writing stuff down in a note-taking app like plain text, I can sync everything to Dropbox and access those notes later on my iPad or my browser, etc. But that's not all. Dropbox also wants to be more social, doesn't everybody these days? So the latest version adds sharing functionality to both Facebook and Twitter, which I think is great particularly for photos. With Facebook, I do wish I had the option of uploading into a Dropbox album rather than just posting to my wall with a link back to the photo on Dropbox, which is how it does now, but it's still a nice feature that Dropbox didn't have just a week ago. And it's free for up to two gigabytes of storage. Go cloud! And finally, number five. Hotel rates are a lot like airline ticket prices. You know, you book ahead, you might get a really good deal. You book last minute, it's gonna be a lot more money. But at the very, very, very last minute, the prices often drop to their very lowest point because, of course, a hotel would rather fill a room for a discount than to not fill it at all. And that's why a free app called Hotel Tonight is a great resource to keep in your pocket because it keeps tabs on all those empty rooms and passes that info along to you. Here's how it works. Use your current location to look up a hotel nearby, or you can search by city. Right now, Hotel Tonight is limited to the US, Canada, and the UK, but is expanding all the time. If I look up hotels in London, for example, I get a handful of results that include original price and then last minute discount. And sometimes it's a really big discount. Hotel Tonight makes an effort to describe these hotels. So it gives hotels tags like, this is hip, or this is solid, or this is a luxe choice. So I have a better idea of the vibe. And then a map view shows exactly what part of the city that hotel is in. Even though the service is called Hotel Tonight, you can actually choose to stay multiple nights, although that might bump up the nightly price. I found that to be true. And sometimes there are maximum nightly stays allowed. But if you travel often or you just like a good deal, this is one. The app is free, and right now they're offering a $25 credit when you sign up and enter the offer code tonight. You're welcome. 
And that wraps up this episode of i5 for the iPhone. To links to everything that we talk about, to subscribe to the show, which is totally free, or to catch up on episodes one through eight, just visit us at twit.tv slash i5. Email us at i5 at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5, or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane, and I'll see you right here next week.